Hi, I wanted to share a special solstice story with you. So if you want to get comfortable in whatever your best, comfiest story listening mode is, go ahead and do that. And you might even want to close your eyes because I don't have pictures for this story. So if you can make the pictures inside of your own head, better still. Best even would be to draw them. So this is a story of the longest night of the year. And it's about a couple of mice. Josephina Mouse had been noticing, and she didn't much like what she was seeing. In all of her short life, when she woke up in the morning, the sun was shining bright, and it went on shining strong until well after she had crawled into her burrow, after her long day of scurrying and searching and finding food. But for days and days, too many to count, the morning light had seemed to get more and more dim, and the dark to come on earlier and earlier in the evening, as if the sun were going to bed early because it just wasn't feeling well. That night, snug in bed in their burrow, Josephina asked her mother, Mama? What's wrong with the sun? It doesn't shine as long as it used to, and when it does shine, it isn't nearly as warm. Is the sun sick? Is, is the sun getting old? Oh, silly little twitch whiskers. The sun is old, older than me or you or even old Mr. Possum, who's been in the woods longer than any of us can remember. But it isn't tired or sick. This is just what the sun does this time of year. It's called winter. But, but why? Why does the sun do this? <laughs> oh, Miss Nosius of Little Pink Noses, that's just what it does. Well, why? Josephine's mother stopped and thought for a moment. Well, perhaps the great winter mouse up in the sky nibbles and nibbles away at the sun so that there's less and less of it to shine. But don't worry, the mouse will soon go to sleep and the sun will grow back. Mm, said Josephina Mouse. I'm sure the moon gets nibbled away bit by bit and then grows back to a full circle again. You can see how there's a piece missing that gets bigger and bigger, but there's no piece missing on the sun. It just seems weaker. Oh, little Miss Bright Eyes, you are a clever one. Well, maybe the sun gets dusty on all of its travels through the sky. And maybe what happens is that the great winter raccoon up in the sky will come and wash the sun, scrubbing with his clever paws day by day until the sun shines bright and strong again. But Raccoon washes her food before she eats it. Is the winter raccoon going to eat up the sun? Huh? What, what will we do then? Yeah, Tesla's worried about that. But it's okay. You don't have to worry. Because Little Miss Worry Paws, you can stop rubbing your paws together quite that way. I'm sure there's no such thing as the winter raccoon. I imagine that what really happens is that winter comes because the great winter raven spreads his wings over all of the earth to go flying. And if you look up at night, you can see the bright stars that he hides in his wings, because you know how raven loves anything shiny. But don't worry. Eventually, the winter raven will get tired of flying, and he'll settle down to roost. And then, when he settles down, his wings won't block the sun, and it will get warmer. But where does such a huge bird find a place to roost? Where is the tree that goes all the way up to the sky for him to land in? Oh, little Miss Wide Ears, does anyone listen as carefully as you? Well, since you're such a clever one, why don't you tell me the story of what happens to make winter? Why is it that we end up having less light? Well, 
Well, now it was Josephina's turn to stop. Maybe. Yeah, thank you for your help, dear. She hid her eyes behind her paws as she tried to think. Maybe what happens is that all of us are riding on a giant acorn, and some of us are up near the cap of the acorn, and some of us are down near the tip of the acorn, and the giant acorn that we're all in is rolling around in the sky by the sun. And sometimes in the rolling and the rolling, well, acorns don't roll evenly. If you knock them, they roll kind of sideways. And so sometimes those of us who are nearer the cap of the acorn are closer to the sun. And sometimes when the acorn's rolling, the animals that are on the tip of the acorn are nearer the sun. And if you're on the side that's closer to the sun, then it's warmer and it's brighter and the days are longer. But don't worry, because if we're on the cap and rolling farther away from the sun, the rolling will keep going, and eventually we'll be closer to the sun. I think that's exactly how winter works. Oh, yes. Oh, Miss Tail, so long it tells tales of its own. I'm sure that must be how it is. But however it is, for now there are seeds in the burrow, and it's time to go to sleep. And so Josephina Mouse curled up close against her mother's warm, soft side. And as she drifted to sleep, she imagined that she could see the stars shining ever so bright on the longest night of the year.